I got a message telling me that um, <laughs> the Minister for Finance and, and this thug would be waiting for me the, at the airport when I come to Nauru and um, so I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care what they think of me. Uh, remembering Nauru when I was a, a young person, it was an island of excess. There was no shortage of food, money, entertainment. By the time I got back as an adult, it was essentially broke. Governance wasn't particularly strong. That was my first trip to Nauru. I followed Xavier to Nauru not really knowing what to expect actually having never travelled in the Pacific before, the hardships of living there was something that I really had trouble getting used to and I probably didn't get used to it in the four years I was there. I think I struggled mentally for the whole time. <laughs> I probably decided to move there at the worst time, of, well, one of the worst times in Nauru's history. Uh, there was, uh, at my house I had no running water, at best 12 hours of electricity a day. Work was hard to get and for periods of two years you might get paid two or three times during that. Late 2009 we moved back to Australia to um, have my second daughter. Between then and 2017-2018 refugee camps had re reopened there. It meant there was a huge flow of money into the country uh, that was used to prop up a, a bad government. People would send me things that they'd found, emails from ministers, documents that showed they were awarding contracts to their friends and families. We had multiple streams of evidence of corruption, bribery charges ag against the government at that time. There were arbitrary deportations, arbitrary arrests, people would lose jobs. It, to me it was a shameful period of Nauru's history. I had no political power in Nauru, so the only thing I could do about it was talk about it on Facebook and things like that. And it made me very unpopular. My family and I received lots of death threats, and I had a seven-year prison term waiting for me for spreading my political hatred on Facebook. He seemed really sad that I don't know if sad is the right word, but disappointed perhaps that um, people that he loved and trusted and were really, really good friends of his were part of the, you know, terrible things that the government was doing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it would be like if we went over there, if they would actually arrest him and lock him up, but I would, I would say so because he's, he's quite vocal. Um, I would have liked my kids to have seen it or at least spent time there. But now I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I don't feel any strong desire to go back at this point of my life. So I'm at peace with it. It's okay.